In this video series, I'm going to show you how to set up and program SmartFly equipment um, demonstrating on the EQ6 Turbo, but a lot of the features in here you can use on other uh, components such as turbo regs by themselves, smart, uh, any of the regulators that have an adjustment on them, or the uh, servo matching uh, equalizers um, to match your servos on wings. A lot of them use these same features shown here with the little white squares and the dials. Um, they'll also have increment and decrement buttons uh, accordingly. Now what I'm doing here is just as a bench, I'm just using the one battery, but one of the features of SmartFly is that you can have two batteries plugged in for redundancy and it supplies two paths of power to the board through the regulator. Um, I also have another battery here for the ignition, which we'll get to later, and uh, we'll just jump right into it. Um, also I have a voltmeter. You'll want one of these for programming the uh, regulator. Um, or you can use a regular multimeter. Um, I prefer to use these and they're available on SmartFly. They're also nice to install on the planes as they record your lowest voltage reading. So if you're in the air putting it through a bunch of tight maneuvers uh, that stress a lot of the servos and increase the amp draw, you can actually see if you're experiencing any voltage drops. And your voltage may drop low enough that um, your receiver could brown out and we don't want that. So it's, it's good to monitor and make sure that your, your power system is set up properly and is uh, large enough and uh, delivers enough amps to your model varying on size. Um, so we'll jump right into it. Um, the first thing that's kind of confusing is getting into the programming menu. The first thing that we want to do is turn your function switch to 9 and that allows, that tells it to go into the programming menu. Now just so that you can have a visual reference, you should have your channel selector uh, turn to one of the channels, 2 through 7, and that will allow one of these LEDs to blink, confirming that you've made it into the programming menu. So I'm just going to turn it to channel 3 right now, and you'll have your battery plugged in and your fail-safe switch. Hold down both buttons and apply power. You'll notice that I don't have a receiver plugged in and number three is blinking. These are all functions that can be done without a receiver and should be done first. Um, you'll notice that the voltage is also low here. What I want to do, since this is a brand new unit right out of the box, I want to reset everything. So in the menu entry here, you can see that option number eight resets all. So we're going to switch the function menu to number 8. Now you want to be careful not to hit 0. Once the function hits 0, it goes into its regular boot up mode. So now I want to hold this down and you'll see that it blinked faster. And now it is all reset. So now that we're back to factory defaults, I'll go ahead and put this back to zero to save it, and then put the pin back in. Now, now we have the board completely set back to factory defaults. So if there was any programming in there before, they're gone now. Um, there's no way to restore them. You're just going to have to reprogram the board if you did this by accident. But because of how it's done, you, you most likely did this deliberately. It's, it's hard to do this accidentally. Um, the first thing that I want to do before I plug in my receiver is I want to set the voltage regulator to make sure that I have the amount of voltage that I want going to my servos. So I'm going to boot this up again, and it's booting up in normal mode. And you can see my voltage here is 5.53. I like to have at least 6.5 volts for my higher end servos on these giant scale models. But if you have servos that can't handle that voltage, then you're going to have to set this to the voltage that you want. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating going to around 6.5. On the side of the board here, you'll see three pins with an up and a down. What you do is I just use a flathead screwdriver and ground out the middle pin 
to the pin to go up because I want to increase the voltage from 5.5. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and you can see the voltage going up. It's going through its cycle. You can see it's coming up There's 6.1. Now this is flashing that I had a low voltage because that's what it recognized at first. 6.2, 6.3, there's 6.52. That's a good setting for what I do with my servos. You can increase it more, but it, it's what the what's available through the regulator. Um, you, it'll go up a little bit higher. Um, and it doesn't work for all your high voltage servos to provide the true 7.4. It is going to be regulated back. Um, it doesn't go up that high. Okay, so now I'm going to program where I want the ignition cutoff. With gas engines, it's important to have a safety feature um, to cut the engine. Some people just use a choke. I personally don't like that. I like being able to kill the ignition itself and set that up on a switch on my receiver. So what I'm going to do is install one of the ignition cutoffs, which comes with a transmitter on the uh, EQ6. First thing we're going to have to do is go into the main function menu. So we're going to put this on the channel 9, and we're going to put this, or function 9, I should say, and rotate this to a channel, um, 2 through 7, so we can get confirmation that we're in the menu. Hold both the buttons down and remove the pin flag switch. You can see that I have a uh, LED blinking here confirming that I am in the menu. Now that I'm in the menu, I want to rotate the dial counterclockwise to, ch to function 2. And you can see over here where channel 6 is blinking. That's the default for the ignition uh, cutoff channel. But I'm for demonstration purposes, I'm going to move that over to channel 3. So I'm going to rotate my channel dial to channel 3 and hold down both buttons. You can see that the LEDs switch to channel 3. Now this tells me that the ignition cutoff, what the transmitter is going to listen to, is what comes in on channel 3 through this line. Now to save it, I'm going to rotate it back to zero and it boots up fresh. Now I can turn the system off. Confirm it, I want to go back into the function menu by putting it on channel 9, holding down both buttons, and applying power to the unit. You can see that channel 3 is flashing now for my, for my confirmation. Now that's because this is on channel 3. If I were to change this to channel 2, you can see that channel 2 is flashing. Now, for the, to confirm your ignition cutoff, rotate the dial again counterclockwise over to function 2 and you can see the channel 3 is blinking. So this tells me that it saved the information to set the ignition cutoff to that channel. I'm going to go ahead and flip that back to zero for now. The system boots up as normal and I can go ahead and turn it off. Now you're going to want to follow your uh, manufacturer's instructions for binding a receiver to your transmitter. I'm using a DX18 and I'm going to use this AR6200 for programming purposes. Now this is not a receiver that I would use in a giant scale model. Um, this is more for my foamies and whatnot, but on the workbench it works out good for demonstration. I don't have to have extra wires cluttering up the workbench with satellites and it does work with my, my transmitter. So I've put in the bind plug and I've already bound this receiver to my transmitter so that it, it knows what it's listening to. Now it's important to note that with your DSM-2 or uh, Spectrum and JR radios, you do not want to plug one of these wires that has power to it into a bat bind plug. The, if you plug this into a bat bind plug, there is a possibility that it could force the receiver to go into bind mode while you're flying. And that wouldn't be good because then you wouldn't have any control over your model. So make sure that you plug this into a channel that you're going to use. I like to, to plug this into my throttle channel. Channel 1 
is usually a non-mixable channel, so I can't, you know, put an aileron or elevator plugged into here because I don't have the servo matching for multiple servos, which makes it excellent for my uh, throttle. So I'm all, right now I don't have a throttle set up. I'm I'm using that for my voltage uh, voltmeter. So I'm going to plug this one into throttle to give my receiver power. And now I'm going to plug channel 2 into aileron. Now I'm doing this because I plan on hooking up servos to channel 2 so I can show you some of the mixing features. And channel 3 I'm going to plug into auxiliary over here. And that's where I'm going to continue setting up the uh, ignition cutoff. So for bench test purposes, these are the only channels needed, and I'm just going to leave it set like this. Um, first we'll go ahead and go do the uh, ignition cutoff. So you're going to need your fiber optic cable that comes with a unit, and we're going to plug this in to the transmitter on the unit. You're going to loosen this up. Put the fiber optic cable in until it bottoms out, then pull it out just a hair. And that makes sure that, that the uh, light inside um, hits the face of the, the actual glass fiber in here and sends it out. Same thing with the receiver side. You want to loosen this up, put it in all the way until it hits bottom. I'm going to use my fingernail here so you can see how far I'm pulling it out. And it's just like a millimeter and then close this up. Now that should ensure that we have good signal going from the transmitter to the receiver. Now the receiver is going to need power. You can see here the switch battery lead is this and we're going to plug our battery in over here making sure that we have power to the unit. I have the LED plugged in, and this is going to be our confirmation that we have power going through the unit that would go to your ignition, which is here. This other wire is a charge cable so that you can charge your ignition battery separate from the system. There's no power that goes through this cable, so your ignition is completely isolated and uses its own battery, um, which I think is the best way to, to go. Um, then make sure that no back EMF from your ignition system can come back to your board and potentially damage your receiver or wreak havoc on your servos. So when we've already set it to channel 3, so channel 3 is plugged into the auxiliary channel. In my radio, I want to go into the programming menu. On this one, we're going to have to boot up into here. And I want to make sure that the um, channel assignments with it, 3 says that it's for the elevator. And that's fine. That's the channel that the receiver is listening to. So you don't want to change this one. What I want to do is I want to put my ignition kill over here on A. And I have it plugged into AUX1, so I want to make sure that I find AUX1 over here. Next, I'm going to have my channel input config. AUX1 is currently set to D, which is up here. Again, I want the switch to A, so I'm going to change that to A. Now I have that all set. Boot up your, re your transmitter as you normally would. And now we can turn on the unit. You can see here the light came on for the ignition. So now I'm providing power to the ignition and I'd be able to start my engine. Hit the switch and it turns off. So the quick, easy way to do your ignition kill and bind it to a switch so that you, you know that you can kill your engine or that it's safe while pulling it out to the starting station and if the prop gets bumped or someone's flipping it uh, for you, you can make sure that, you know, that they're not going to lose their hand or anything. You want to use safe starting procedures. I prefer to use a chicken stack. 
um, don't want to break a nail or anything like that. But that's how you uh, set up the uh, ignition cutoff. And next what we're going to do is uh, set up some servos here. Now, it doesn't matter what servo you use. I have a high tech a JR and a Futaba here, they're all compatible, but I would never use all three of these on the same surface. You want to use the same servos no matter what. So I'm going to put, plug the high tech into channel 2 here, which I have set up as my aileron. I'm going to plug in the JR here. And the, finally the Futaba last. So we have all three servos plugged into the same channel. Now this is where the beauty of this comes in. If these, these were all the on the same surface, you'd want to make sure that they're all going the right direction and the right throws before you hook up any of your mechanical linkages. Um, because if you hook up all the mechanical linkages and throw the surface and one's going backwards, you might break your aileron or uh, twist something you could burn out a servo if you have two going in the same direction, one going in the other direction. There's too much force. And the signals received by the servos need to be interpreted the same. Again, you'd want to use either you know, three high tags, three JRs, three Futabas, three of any of the servos that, that you're using, but you want to make sure that they're the same ones on the surface for matching. Um, so we're going to power this up and we'll look on the aileron here and you can see I have two servos moving in the same direction and one's moving the opposite direction. Well we want to make sure that the Futaba is going to move the right direction so let's go through the reversing procedure on this. Then the same reversing procedure uh, works on all of the smart flies equipped with this setup here. Notice how we did not have to go into the special options menu. This is where we go and just boot it up normally and we go in, into different sets of functions here. You'll notice that the unit is labeled with an A, B, and a C. So you want to make note of which servos are which. We know that the high tech is plugged into A, the JR is plugged into B, and the Futaba is plugged into C. The Futaba is the one that we want to change the direction on. So in here you're going to see that for the reversing you're going to have an A, B, and a C. That's 5, 6, and 7. So first we want to select the channel that we're going to adjust, which I already have it on. It's channel 2 for our ailerons. And we want to reverse channel C. So I'm going to put the function to number 7. Do that. You have to hold it down for a couple seconds. You can see where the LED change confirming your input and now they're all moving the same direction. You can do the same thing the other way. So let's switch it back. Then you can see where it's moving different. Now let's make the others match because say this one was going in the right direction on our model. So we'll want to go to function 6 to do B. Press and hold. It didn't change, so it must be the other way. There, you can see you got recognition there. And now you can see that B and C are moving the same direction. Now let's do channel 5, which is going to be A. You can see the high tech is moving in a different direction. Press and hold. It registered the change. And now they're all moving in the same direction the other way. So doing the re reversing is fairly simple. You, you just need to look for the light. Some of them you need to hit increment, some of them you have to hit decrement. And that's a figure it out type thing. Um, it's it's going to work one way or the other, but confirm it on your control surface that you're moving it into the right direction. As for servo matching, um, those are going to be your options. Adjust servo A, B, and C is functions 1, 2, and 3. So what we have here is you can see how they're they're moving the same direction. But let's say on the surface this one isn't quite moving as far, so we need to get it to move a bit further. So we want to rotate our function around 
to function 1. Again, stay on channel 2. Function 1 is going to do servo A, which is the high tech that we want to do. And let's say we need it further that way. So we'll hit the button. You can see how the servo is moving little by little. To get to that end point. But you can see it didn't affect the other side. So you have to do each direction until your surfaces all match up for the throw that you want. Uh, refer to your aircraft manufacturer for recommended throws. Um, and most of them will tell you that uh, for 3D you're going to want at least 45 degrees, which is where the fun really begins anyway. Um, I hope this helps you out and uh, have safe flight. Have, uh, have fun out there flying. I'll see you at the field and uh, be safe.